Biscayne National Park is an incredibly unique and yet underrated national park in Florida. One of the things that makes it so unique is the fact that 95% of the park is underwater and only accessible by boat. We wanted to see as much of the park as we could, so we booked the Snorkel and Paddle Eco Adventure. If this tour sounds like a bit more than you want to do, you can just rent a kayak and explore on your own, but you won't be able to visit some of the spots that you'll see in this video. If you prefer just snorkeling or just paddleboarding, they also have tours for that, but this one in our opinion gave you the most bang for the buck. Two things that we recommend bringing on your tour are a dry bag to keep your valuables dry and either a rash guard or a wetsuit, and you'll see why in just a little bit. You might also want to bring some bug spray, because it can get a little bit buggy out there. After checking in at the gift shop upstairs, we headed down to the water to wait for our captain to arrive. We also picked up our flotation vests for the snorkeling portion of the tour. As soon as our Captain Anthony showed up, it was time to head out to the boat and get underway. One thing to take note of is the fact that every tour can be just a little bit different. There are several different paddle boring spots that they can go to and also several different snorkeling spots. The tour will typically start at Jones Lagoon, but because of the weather, we were heading to Sands Key instead. As we rounded the corner out of the harbor, we got our first look at just how big Biscayne National Park is. We couldn't even see Sands Key because it was a little bit over 10 miles away. As soon as we got out of the no-wig zone, it was time to start on our nearly half an hour journey over to Sands Key. Yeah, baby. The boat rode really nice, but if you are prone to seasickness, I would definitely advise taking some medication for it. The boat ride was really fun and before we knew it, we were pulling up at Sands Key. While Anthony was dropping the anchor, he was telling us lots of fun facts about the area. For example, here's a fun fact. Did you know that mangroves and seagrass produce more of the Earth's oxygen than the rainforest? He also told us the difference between keys and islands. At first they may seem like the same thing, but keys are actually formed through a buildup of coral. Speaking of coral, Key Biscayne National Park is located on the northernmost point of the third largest coral reef in the entire world. Once everyone in the boat had gotten onto their paddle boards, we headed into the mangroves. You don't need to be super proficient at paddleboarding to enjoy this. Most of the group stayed kneeling, sitting, or falling off the paddle boards the entire time. Anthony gave us more fascinating facts about the area and then turned us loose to explore on our own. After paddling around for a while, it was time to get back on the boat because we were off to our second stop, which is Boca Chita Key. This was a much shorter ride because Boca Chita Key is only about a mile and a half away. This island has some pretty wild history. All of the buildings and structures that you see on the island were built by Mark Honeywell in the 1930s. If you're not familiar with Mark Honeywell, just think about Honeywell Thermostats. Yeah, that's his company. Mark passed away in 1964, so he obviously didn't have anything to do with the modern day smart thermostats. But as you can tell by anyone that owns an island, he was obviously a pretty successful guy. You may be wondering what Mark's motivation was to buy an island, and that was to throw the sickest parties full of the richest people in the country. History has it that things would get pretty crazy here, but don't worry if you partied too hard because there was a chapel built where you could go and ask for forgiveness after the party was over. It must have been pretty wild to see this lagoon absolutely packed full of yachts owned by the most elite members of society. We were supposed to go snorkeling here, but as we explored the island, we could see the dark clouds starting to roll in. It was amazing how fast the storm was on top of us, and soon there were black skies overhead and thunder off in the distance. As soon as we got back to the boat, Anthony said it would probably be a good idea to get back to shore as fast as we could. We were basically running from the storm, and it was going to be a bit more of a bumpy and exciting ride on the way back. The good thing is that we weren't going to be missing out on our snorkeling experience, because they were going to set us up with a second boat the following day. The one thing that we had going in our favor was, even though it was raining pretty heavily on us on the way back, this is Florida, so the temperatures were still nice and warm. 
We arrived back at the harbor without any problems and we immediately ran up to the gift shop to reschedule for the following day. Day two started off nice and early and our group was stoked and ready to get some snorkeling in. As soon as we got to the loading area, we met Jessica who would be joining us on the boat and got our life vests. We were gonna be on a different and much bigger boat this time around and once on board, we met our captain Derek. As we pulled away from the dock, we spotted Anthony who was our captain the day before getting ready to take another group out. One thing that we really appreciated was just how fun and knowledgeable both crews on the boats were. Not only did they have tons of knowledge about the history of the Keys, but they knew a lot about the wildlife here as well. And as you're going to see in a little bit, that is going to come in handy. Thankfully the weather was way better on this day and it was perfect conditions to go out and go snorkeling. Even though we were about 5 miles offshore, the water here is only about 25 feet deep. Some areas were even more shallow, and that gave us the opportunity to dive down and check out the sea life. There was definitely no shortage of sea creatures to check out, and I even saw a very small and shy shark at one point. The water temperatures here were perfect, and everyone was having a great time, but Derek and Jessica still have one more spot that they wanted us to check out. As we arrived to the second spot, we dropped anchor in a sandy patch that was surrounded by a massive coral reef. This spot was pretty awesome as well, and it was so nice to see the sea life and all of the coral thriving. There was a little bit more of a current at this spot, so you had to pop your head up every once in a while to make sure you weren't getting too far away from the boat. If you're not a strong swimmer, you might struggle a little bit here. This spot was also nice and shallow, and at one point, V spotted this green sea turtle swimming around. We were nearing the end of our snorkeling time, and I was just swimming around and grabbing as many shots as I could. And that is when I ran into a tiny bit of a problem. While swimming backwards and taking pictures, I somehow managed to swim into a Portuguese man of war. This guy has one of the most painful stings in the entire ocean. I did my best to try and laugh it off and put on a tough face, but I was in absolute agony right here. Derek and Jessica knew exactly what to do and they doused me with vinegar as soon as I got back on the boat. That was a temporary fix, but it wasn't until we got back to the Airbnb a couple hours later where I could take a hot shower and get rid of the rest of the sting. I'd like to thank Kai aka the Nano Naturalist for that awesome shot of the man of war. I was in way too much pain to try to take a picture of him. If you want to see more of her work, the link is in the description below. Even with the Man of War Sting, we still had a really great time and I would not hesitate to go back. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up and for all the information, head on over to thatadventurelife.com.